Othello, a Moorish general in the Venetian army, has secretly married Desdemona, the daughter of Brabantio. Iago, his ensign, is jealous of Cassio, who has just been appointed lieutenant over his head. In Venice, at dead of night, Iago comes to warn Othello that Brabantio has found out about his marriage. I pray you, sir, are you fast married? Be assured of this, that this Brabantio is much beloved and hath in his effect a voice potential as double as the Duke's. He will divorce you or put upon you what restraint or grievance the law will give him cable. Let him do his spite. My services, which I have done the Signore, shall out-tongue his complaints. But look what lights come yond. Those are the Resid Father and his friends. You were best go in. Not I. I must be found. My parts, my title, and my perfect soul shall manifest me rightly. Is it they? By Janus, I think no. The servants of the Duke and my Lieutenant Cassio. The goodness of the night upon you, friends. What is the news? The Duke does greet you, General, and he requires your haste, post-haste appearance. What is the matter, think you? Something from Cyprus, as I may divine. Isn't it some It is well I am found by you. I will but spend a word here in the house and go with you. Ensign, what makes he here? Faith, he tonight hath boarded a land carrack. If it prove lawful prize, he's made forever. I do not understand. He's married. To who? Married to. Come, sir, will you go? Have with you. Here comes another troop to seek for you. It is Brabantio. General, be advised, he comes to bad intent. Hola, stand there. Senior Brabantio, it is the moor. Down with him, thief! Come, sir, I am for you. Keep up your bright swords, for the dew will rust them. Good senior, you shall more command with years than with your weapons. Oh, thou foul thief! Where hast thou stowed my daughter? Damned as thou art, thou hast enchanted her! Lay hold upon him if he do resist, subdue him at his peril! Hold your hands. Whither will you that I go to answer this your charge? To prison. What if I do obey? How may the duke be there with satisfied, whose messengers are here about my side, upon some present business of the state to bring me to him? Tis true, most worthy senior. The Duke's in council, and your noble self, I'm sure, is sent for. How? The Duke in council in this time of the night? Bring him away. Mine's not an idle cause. The Duke himself, or any of my brothers of the state, cannot but feel this wrong as to their own. The Duke and Senators are discussing the hostile maneuvers of the Turkish fleet. There is no composition in this news that gives them credit. Indeed, they are disproportioned. My letters say 107 galleys. And mine, 140. And mine, 200. They all confirm the Turkish fleet and bearing up to Cyprus. What ho, what ho, what ho! A messenger from the galleys. Now, what's the business? The Turkish preparation makes for roads. Aye, so I thought. How many, as you guess? Of 30 sail. And now they bear with frank appearance their purposes towards Cyprus. It is certain, then, for Cyprus. Here comes Brabantio and the valiant Moor. Valiant Othello, we must straight employ you against the general enemy, Ottoman. Welcome, Brabantio. We lacked your counsel and your help tonight. So did I yours. Good your grace, pardon me. Neither my place nor what I heard of business has raised me from my bed. Why, what's the matter? My daughter. Oh, my daughter. Dead? I to me. She is abused, stolen from me, and corrupted by spells and medicines bought of mountebanks. Here is the man, this Moor, whom now it seems your special mandate for the state affairs hath hither brought. Most potent, grave, and reverend seniors, my very noble and approved good masters, that I have taken away this old man's daughter, it is most true. True, I have married her. The very head and front of my offending had this extent, no more. Rude am I in my speech, and little blessed with the soft phrase of peace. Yet, by your gracious patience, I will a round, unvarnished tale deliver of my whole course of love. What drugs, what charms, what conjuration, and what mighty magic, for such proceeding am I charged with all, I won his daughter. A maiden never bold, but she to fall in love with what she feared to look on. But Othello, speak. Did you, by indirect and forced courses, subdue and poison this young maid's affections, or came it by request? I do beseech you, send for the lady to the Sagittary, and let her speak of me before her father. Fetch Desdemona hither. Iago, conduct them. You best know the place. Her father loved me, oft invited me, still questioned me the story of my life from year to year. 
the battles, sieges, fortune that I have passed. I ran it through, even from my boyish days to the very moment that he bade me tell it. My story being done, she gave me for my pains a world of sighs. She swore in faith to a strange, it was passing strange, it was pitiful, it was wondrous pitiful. She wished she had not heard it, yet she wished that heaven had made her such a man. She thanked me and bade me, if I had a friend that loved her, I should but teach him how to tell my story, and that would woo her. Upon this hint, I spake. She loved me for the dangers I had passed, and I loved her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft I have used. Here comes the lady. Let her witness it. Come hither, gentle mistress. Do you perceive in all this noble company where most you owe obedience? My noble father, I do perceive here a divided duty. To you I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me how to respect you. You are lord of all my duty. I am, hitherto, your daughter. But here's my husband. And so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father. So much I challenge that I may profess, due to the moor, my lord. God be with you. I have done. Come hither, moor. I here do give thee that with all my heart, which but thou hast already. With all my heart I would keep from thee. Please it, your grace, on to the state affairs. The Turk, with a most mighty preparation, makes for Cyprus. Othello, the fortitude of the place is best known to you. I do undertake these present wars against the Ottomites. Most humbly, therefore, bending to your state, I crave fit disposition for my wife. If you please, be it at your father's. I will not have it so. Nor I. Nor would I there reside, to put my father in impatient thoughts by being in his eye. Most gracious Duke, to my unfolding lend a gracious ear. What would you, Desdemona? But I did love the moor to live with him. My downright violence and scorn of fortunes may trumpet to the world. So that, dear lords, if I be left behind a moth of peace and he go to the war, the rights for which I love him are bereft me, and I a heavy interim shall support by his dear absence. Let me go with him. Let her have your voices. Vouch with me, heaven, I therefore beg it not to please the palate of my appetite, but to be free and bounteous to her mind. Be it as you shall privately determine, either for her stay or going. The affair cries haste, and speed must answer it. You must away tonight. With all my heart. Let it be so. Good night to everyone. Adieu, brave Moor. Use Desdemona well. Look to her, Moor, if thou hast eyes to see. She has deceived her father, and may thee. My life upon her faith. Honest Iago, my Desdemona must I leave to thee. I prithee, let thy wife attend on her, and bring them after in the best advantage. Good, my lord. Come, Desdemona. I have but an hour of love, worldly matter, and direction to spend with thee. We must obey the time. <laughs> I hate the moor, and it is thought abroad that twixt my sheets he's done my office. I know not if to be true, but I, for mere suspicion in that kind, will do as if for surety. He holds me well, the better shall my purpose work on him. Cassio's a proper man. Let's see now. To get his place and to plume up my will in double knavery. How? How? Let's see. After some time to abuse Othello's ear that Cassio's too familiar with his wife. 
The moor is of a free and open nature that thinks men honest that but seem to be so, and will as tenderly be led by the nose as asses are. I have to. It is engendered. Hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light. The Turkish fleet is routed by a great storm. Iago and his wife, Emilia, escort Desdemona to Cyprus, where they are joined by the victorious Othello. Oh, my fair warrior. My dear Othello. It gives me wonder, great as my content, to see you here before me. Oh, my soul's joy. If after every tempest comes such calms, may the winds blow till they have wakened death. The heavens forbid, but that our loves and comfort should increase even as our days do grow. Amen to that, sweet powers. I cannot speak enough of this content. It stops me here. It is too much of joy. And this, and this, the greatest discords be that e'er our hearts shall make. Oh, you are well tuned now, but I'll set down the pegs that make this music as honest as I am. Come, let us to the castle. News, friends, our wars are done. <laughs> the Turks are drowned. <laughs> Honey, you shall be well desired in Cyprus. I have found great love amongst them. Come, Desdemona. Once more, well met at Cyprus. <laughs> The island celebrates its delivery from the Turks. Iago induces Cassio to drink heavily and provokes him into a quarrel with a fellow officer. What is the matter here? Hold for your lives! Why, how now hold? From whence ariseth this? Are we turned Turks? And to ourselves do that which heaven hath forbid the Ottomites? For Christian shame put by this barbarous brawl. Silence that dreadful bell! It frights the isle from her propriety. What is the matter, masters? Honest Iago, that looks dead with grieving speak, who began this? On thy love I charge thee. I had rather have this tongue cut from my mouth than it should do offence to Michael Cassio. Yet I persuade myself to speak the truth shall nothing wrong him. For that I heard the clink and fall of swords, and Cassio high in oath, which till tonight I ne'er might say before. Yet surely Cassio, I believe, received from him that fled some strange indignity which patience could not pass. I know, Iago, thy honesty and love doth mince this matter, making it light to Cassio. Cassio, I love thee, but never more be officer of mine. What is the matter? All's well now, sweeting. Come away to bed. Iago, look with care about the town and silence those whom this vile brawl distracted. Come, Desdemona. What? Are you hurt, Lieutenant? I passed all surgery. Mary, heaven forbid. Reputation. 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 Oh, I have lost my reputation. As I'm an honest man, I thought you'd received some bodily wound. There's more sense in that than in reputation. I would rather suit to be despised than to deceive so good a commander with so slight, so drunken, and so indiscreet an officer. You or any man living may be drunk at a time, ma'am. I tell you what you shall do. Our general's wife is now the general. Confess yourself freely to her. Importune her help to put you in your place again. And my fortunes against any lay worth naming, this crack of your love shall grow stronger than it was before. You advise me well. Betimes in the morning I will beseech the virtuous Desdemona to undertake for me. You are the right. Good night, Lieutenant. I must do the watch. Good night, honest Iago. <laughs> Divinity of hell. When devils will their blackest sins put on, they do suggest it first with heavenly shows, as I do now. For whilst this honest fool plies Desdemona to repair his fortune, and she for him pleads strongly to the moor, 
I'll pour this pestilence into his ear that she repeals him for her body's lust. And by how much she strives to do him good shall she undo her credit with the moor. So will I turn her virtue into pitch and out of her own goodness make the net that shall enmesh them all. The next morning, Cassio finds Desdemona and Amelia in the castle garden. Be thou assured, good Cassio, I will do all my abilities in thy behalf. Good madam, do. I warrant it grieves my husband as if the cause were his. Oh, that's an honest fellow. Do not doubt, Cassio, but I will have my lord and you again as friendly as you were. Bounteous, madam. Whatever shall become of Michael Cassio, he's never anything but your true servant. Madam, here comes my lord, and Iago with him. Madam, I'll take my leave. Why, stay and hear me speak. Madam, not now. I am very ill at ease, unfit for my own purpose. Well, do your discretion. Ah, I like not that. What dost thou say, Iago? Oh, nothing, my lord. Or oh, if... <laughs> I know not what. Was not that Cassio parted from my wife? Cassio, my lord? No, sure. I cannot think that he would steal away so guilty-like, seeing your coming. I do believe twas he. How now, my lord? I have been talking with a suitor here, a man that languishes in your displeasure. Who is it you mean? Why, your lieutenant, Cassio. Good, my lord, if I have any grace or power to move you, his present reconciliate, I prithee, call him back. Not now, sweet Desdemona, some other time. But shall be shortly. The sooner, sweet, for you. Shall be tonight at supper. No, not tonight. Tomorrow dinner, then? I shall not dine at home. I meet the captains at the Citadel. Why, then, tomorrow night? <laughs> Pray thee no more. Let him come when he will. I will deny thee nothing. Whereon I do beseech thee, grant me this, to leave me but a little to myself. Shall I deny you? No. Farewell, my lord. Farewell, my Desdemona. I'll come to thee straight. Excellent wretch. Perdition catch my soul, but I do love thee. And when I love thee not, chaos is come again. My noble lord. What dost thou say, Iago? Did Michael Cassio, when you wooed my lady, know of your love? He did, and went between us very oft. Indeed. Indeed, aye, indeed. Discerns thou aught in that? Is he not honest? Honest, my lord? My lord, for aught I know. What dost thou think? Thou didst mean something. I heard thee say even now thou likest not that when Cassio left my wife. What didst not like? If thou dost love me, show me thy thought. My lord, you know I love you. It were not for your quiet nor your good to let you know my thoughts. What dost thou mean? Good name in man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse, steals trash, tis something nothing. But he that filches from me my good name, robs me of that which not enriches him, but makes me poor indeed. By heaven, I'll know thy thoughts. Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. Oh, what damned minutes tells he o'er who dotes yet doubts suspects yet strongly loves why why is this tis not to make me jealous to say my wife is fair feeds well loves company is free of speech sings plays and dances well where virtue is these are more virtuous nor from mine own weak merits will i draw the smallest fear or doubt of her revolt for she had eyes and chose me no, Iago, I'll see before I doubt. When I doubt, prove. And on the proof there is no more but this. Away at once with love or jealousy. I'm glad of this, for now I shall have reason to show the love and duty that I bear you. Look to your wife. Observe her well with Cassio. I know our country disposition well. In Venice they do let heaven see the pranks they dare not show their husbands. Dost thou say so? She did deceive her father, marrying you. 
And when she seemed to shake and fear your looks, she loved them most. And so she did. My lord, I see you're moved. No, not much moved. I do not think but Desdemona's honest. Farewell, farewell. If more thou dost perceive, let me know more. Set on thy wife to observe. Leave me, Iago. My lord, I take my leave. Why did I marry? This honest creature doubtless sees and knows more, much more than he unfolds. Happily, for I am black and have not those soft parts of conversation that chamberers have, or for I am declined into the veil of years, yet that's not much. She's gone, I am abused, and my relief must be to loathe her. Oh, curse of marriage that we can call these delicate creatures ours and not their appetites. Look where she comes. If she be false, why then, heaven mocks itself. I'll not believe it. How now, my dear Othello, your dinner and the generous islanders by you invited to attend your presence? I am to blame. Why do you speak so faintly? Are you not well? I have a pain upon my forehead here. Faith, that's with watching. Twill away again. Let me but bind it hard. Within this hour it will be well. Your napkin is too little. Let it alone. Come, I'll go in with you. I am very sorry that you are not well. I am glad I have found this napkin. This was her first remembrance from the moor. How now? What do you hear alone, Emilia? Do not you chide. What will you give me now for that same handkerchief the moor first gave to Desdemona? That which so often you did bid me steal. Hast stolen it from her? No, faith, she let it drop by negligence. A good wench. Give it me. Why, what's that to you? I have use for it. Iago. Go, leave me. I will, in Cassio's lodging, lose this napkin and let him find it. Trifles light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong as proofs of holy writ. This may do something. The moor already changes with my poison. Look where he comes. Not poppy, nor mandragora, nor all the drowsy syrups of the world shall ever medicine thee to that sweet sleep which thou owest yesterday. False to me. Why, how now, General? Avant, be gone. Thou hast set me on the rack. I swear it is better to be much abused than but to know it a little. How now, my lord? I had been happy if the general camp, pioneers and all, had tasted her sweet body. So I had nothing known. Oh, now forever, farewell the tranquil mind. Farewell content. Farewell, the plumed troop and the big wars that make ambition virtue. Oh, farewell. Farewell, the neighing steed and the shrill trump, the spirit-stirring drum, the ear-piercing fife, the royal banner, and all quality, pride, pomp, and circumstance of glorious war. Farewell. Othello's occupation's gone. Is possible, my lord. Villain, be sure thou prove my love a whore. Be sure of it. Give me the ocular proof. If thou dost slander her and torture me, never pray more, abandon all remorse. I think my wife be honest and think she is not. I think that thou art just and think thou art not. I'll have some proof. My name that was as fresh as Dion's visage is now begrimed and black as mine own face. Would I was satisfied. I see you are eaten up with passion. I do repent me that I put it to you. Give me a living reason she's disloyal. I do not like the office. But sith I'm entered in this cause so far, I will go on. I lay with Cassio lately, and being troubled with a raging tooth, I could not sleep. In sleep I heard him say, Sweet Desdemona, let us be wary. Let us hide our loves. And then, sir, would he gripe and wring my hand, cry, Oh, sweet creature, then kiss me hard. Oh, monstrous, monstrous! 
I'll tear her all to pieces. May it be wise. Yet we see nothing done. She may be honest yet. Tell me about this. Have you not sometimes seen a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? I gave her such a one. It was my first gift. I know not that, but such a handkerchief, I'm sure it was your wife's. Did I today see Cassio wipe his beard with? Oh, blood, Iago, blood. Patience, I say, your mind may change. Never, Iago. Like to the Pontic Sea, whose icy current and compulsive course ne'er keeps retiring ebb, but keeps due on to the Propontic and the Hellespont, even so my bloody thoughts, with violent pace, shall ne'er look back, ne'er ebb to humble love, till that a capable and wide revenge swallow them up. In the due reverence of a sacred vow, I here engage my words. Do not rise yet. Witness, you ever burning lights above, you elements that clip us round about. Witness that here Iago doth give up the execution of his wit, hands, heart, to wronged Othello's service. Let him command, and to obey shall be in me remorse. What bloody business ever. I greet thy love, not with vain thanks, but with acceptance bounteous. Within these three days, let me hear thee say that Cassio's not alive. My friend is dead. It is done at your request. But let her live. Damn her, nude minx! Oh, damn her, damn her! Come, go with me apart. I will withdraw to furnish me with some swift means of death. Call the fair devil! No, art thou, my lieutenant? I am your own. Forever. Desdemona and Amelia go again to Othello to plead for Cassio. How is it with you, my lord? Well, my good lady. Oh, hardness to dissemble. How do you, Desdemona? Well, my good lord. Give me your hand. This hand is moist, my lady. It yet hath felt no age, nor known no sorrow. This argues fruitfulness and liberal heart. Hot, hot and moist. It is a good hand, a frank one. You may indeed say so. But was that hand that gave away my heart. Come now, your promise. What promise, Chuck? I've sent to bid Cassio come speak with you. I have a salt and sorry room offends me. Lend me thy handkerchief. Here, my lord. That which I gave you. I have it not about me. That's a fault. That handkerchief did an Egyptian to my mother give. She was a charmer and could almost read the thoughts of people. She told her while she kept it, it would make her amiable and subdue my father entirely to her love. But if she lost it or made a gift of it, my father's eye should hold her loathly. She dying gave it me and bid me when my fate would have me wived to give it her. I did so and take heed on to loose or gift away with such perdition as nothing else could match. And would to heaven that I had never seen it. It's lost, it's gone. Speak, is it out of the way? It is not lost. But what an if it were? Fetch it. Let me see it. Uh, so I can, sir, but I will not now. Oh, this is a trick to put me from my suit. Pray you, let Cassio be received again. Fetch me the handkerchief. My mind misgives. Come, come. You'll never meet a more sufficient man. The handkerchief! A man that all his time hath founded his good fortunes on your love, shared dangers with you. The handkerchief! In sooth, you are to blame. Zooms! <sighs> Is not this man jealous? Something short of state, Amelia. Either from Venice or some unhatched practice made demonstrable here in Cyprus to him have puddled his clear spirit. Nay, we must think men are not gods. Pray heaven it be state matters as you think. And no conception nor no jealous toy concerning you. Alas, the day I never gave him cause. But jealous souls will not be answered so. They are not ever jealous for the cause, but jealous for they are jealous. It is a monster begot upon itself, born on itself. 
Heaven keep that monster from a fellow's mind. Iago gives a fellow more false evidence of Cassio's treachery and finally convinces him. How shall I murder him, Iago? I would have him nine years of killing. A fine woman, a fair woman, a sweet woman. Nay, you must forget that. Aye, let her rot and perish and be damned tonight, for she shall not live. No, my heart is turned to stone. I strike it and it hurts my hand. Oh, the world hath not a sweeter creature. She might lie by an emperor's side and command him tasks. She's the worst for all this. Nay, that's certain. Oh, but yet the pity of it, Iago. Oh, Iago. The pity of it, Iago. If you are so fond over her iniquity, give her patent to offend. For if it touch not you, it comes near nobody. Get me some poison, Iago, this night. I'll not expostulate with her, lest her body and beauty unprovide my mind again. This night, Iago. Do it not with poison. Strangle her in her bed, even the bed she hath contaminated. Good, good. The justice of it pleases. Very good. And for Cassio, let me be his undertaker. You shall hear more by midnight. Excellent good. What trumpet is that same? I want something from Venice. It is Lodovico. Come from the Duke. See, your wife's with him. God save you, worthy general. With all my heart, sir. The Duke and the senators of Venice greet you in this letter. I kiss the instrument of their pleasures. Good, Iago. How does Lieutenant Cassio? Lives, sir. Cousin, there's fallen between him and my lord an unkind breach. But you shall make all well. I would do much to atone them for the love I bear to Cassio. Fire and brimstone. My lord? Maybe the letter moved him. For as I think, they do command him home, deputing Cassio in his government. By my troth, I'm glad on I am glad to see you mad. Why, sweet Othello. Devil! <gasps> I have not deserved this. My lord, this would not be believed in Venice, though I should swear I saw it. Tis very much. Make her amends, she weeps. I will not stay to offend you. Sir, I obey the mandate and will return to Venice. Hence, avaunt! Cassio shall have my place. And, sir, tonight I do entreat that we may sup together. You are welcome, sir, to Cyprus, goats and monkeys. That evening in the castle, a fellow questions Amelia. You have seen nothing then? Nor ever heard, nor ever did suspect. Yes, you have seen Cassio and she together. Then I saw no harm, and then I heard each syllable the breath made up between them. What? Did they never whisper? Never, my lord. Nor send you out of the way? Never. Good, my lord. What is your pleasure? Let me see your eyes. Look in my face. What horrible fancy is this? Upon my knees, what doth your speech import? I understand a fury in your words, but not the words. Why, what art thou? Your wife, my lord, your true and loyal wife. Come, swear it. Damn myself. Heaven doth truly know it. Heaven truly knows that thou art false as hell. To whom, my lord, with whom? How am I false? Ah, Desdemona, away, away, away. I hope my noble lord esteems me honest. Oh, aye, as summer flies are in the shambles that quicken even with blowing. Oh, thou weed, who art so lovely fair and smellst so sweet that the sense aches at thee. Wouldst thou had ne'er been born. Alas, what ignorant sin have I committed? What committed? I should make very forges of my cheeks that would to cinders burn up modesty did I but speak thy deeds. What committed? By heaven, you do me wrong. I cry you mercy then. I took you for that cunning whore of Venice that married with Othello. Emilia. Madam. Good Emilia, give me my knightly wearing and adieu. 
We must not now displease him. Aye. Would you had never seen him. So would not I. My love doth so approve him that even his stubbornness, his checks, his frowns, for the unpin me, have grace and favor in them. I have laid those wedding sheets you bade me on the bed. All's one. Good faith, how foolish are our minds. If I do die before thee, prithee shroud me in one of those same sheets. Come, come, you talk. My mother had a maid called Barbara. She was in love, and he she loved proved mad and did forsake her. She had a song of Willow. She died singing it. That song tonight will not go from my mind. Shall I go fetch your nightgown? No. Unpin me here. A poor soul sat sighing by a sycamore tree. Sing all the green willow. Her hand on her bosom, her head on her knee. Sing willow, 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 willow. Sing willow, 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 willow. Must be my garland. The fresh streams ran by her and murmured her moans. Sing all the green willow. Her salt tears fell from her and softened the stones. Sing willow, 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 willow. We'll lay by these. Sing willow, 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 willow. Must be my garland. Prithee, hide thee. He'll come anon. Let nobody blame him. His scorn I approve. Nay, that's not next. <gasps> Hark! Who is that knocks? It's the wind. Oh. I called my love false love. But what said he then? Sing all the green willow. If I court more women, you'll couch with more men. <laughs> so, get thee gone. Good night. Later that night, Iago lays an ambush to kill Cassio, but his plot fails. Othello retires to bed and finds Desdemona asleep. It is the cause, it is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you, you chaste stars. It is the cause. Yet I'll not shed her blood, nor scar that whiter skin of hers than snow and smooth as monumental alabaster. Yet she must die, else she'll betray more men. Put out the light, and then put out the light. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore, should I repent me. But once put out thy light, thou cunningst pattern of excelling nature, I know not where is that Promethean heat that can thy light relume. When I have plucked the rose, I cannot give it vital growth again. It needs must wither. I'll smell it on the tree. Oh, balmy breath, that dost almost persuade justice to break her sword. One more, one more. Be thus when thou art dead, and I will kill thee and love thee after. One more, and that's the last. So sweet was ne'er so fatal. I must weep, but they are cruel tears. This sorrow's heavenly. It strikes where it doth love. Hmm. She wakes. Who's there? Othello? I, Desdemona. Will you come to bed, my lord? Have you prayed tonight, Desdemona? I, my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled as yet to heaven and grace, Solicit for it straight. Alack, my lord, what may you mean by that? I would not kill thy unprepared spirit. Talk you of killing? Aye, I, I do. Then heaven have mercy on me. Amen, with all my heart. And yet I fear you, for you are fatal then when your eyes roll so. 
Why I should fear, I know not, since guiltiness I know not. But yet, I feel I fear. Think on thy sins. Fair loves I bear to you. Aye, and for that thou diest. That death's unnatural that kills for loving. Peace and be still. I will so. What's the matter? That handkerchief which I so loved and gave thee, thou gavest to Cassio. No, by my life and soul. Send for the man and ask him. Sweet soul, take heed. Take heed of perjury. Thou art on thy deathbed. Aye, but not yet to die. Presently. Therefore confess thee freely of thy sin. For to deny each article with oath cannot remove nor choke the strong conception that I do groan withal. Thou art to die. Oh, heaven have mercy on me. I say amen. And have you mercy too. I never did offend you in my life. Never loved Cassio but with such general warranty of heaven as I might love. I never gave him token. By heaven, I saw my handkerchief in his hand. Oh, oh perjured woman. He found it then. I never gave it him. Send for him hither. Let him confess a truth. He hath confessed. What, my lord? That he hath used thee. How? Unlawfully? Aye. He will not say so. No, his mouth is stopped. Honest Iago has taken order for it. Yes, he is betrayed, and I undone. Arch trumpet, weep thou for him to my face. You kill me tomorrow, let me live tonight. Nay, if you strive. But half an hour. Being done, there is no pause. But while I say one prayer. It is too late. have thee linger in thy pain so so oh good my lord i would speak a word with you yes tis emilia by and by she's dead tis like she comes to speak of cassio's death the noise was high ah no more moving still as the grave shall she come in no what's best to do if she come in she'll sure speak to my wife my wife my wife, what wife? I have no wife. Oh, insupportable. Oh, heavy hour. Methinks it should be now a huge eclipse of sun and moon, and that the affrighted globe did yawn at alteration. I do beseech you that I may speak with you, good my lord. Soft. By and by, let me the curtains draw. Where art thou? What's the matter with thee now? Good, my lord, treachery. It is Cassio, my lord. Cassio killed? No, Cassio is but wounded. Not Cassio killed? Then murders out of tune and sweet revenge grows harsh. Ah, falsely, falsely murdered. Alas, what cry is that? Ah? Huh? Out and alas, that was my lady's voice. Help, help! Oh, help! Oh, lady, speak again. Sweet Desdemona, sweet mistress, speak. A guiltless death I die. Who, who hath done this deed? Nobody. I myself. Farewell. Commend me to my kind lord. Farewell. Why, how should she be murdered? Alas, who knows? You heard her say herself it was not I. She said so. I must needs report the truth. She's like a liar gone to burning hell. T'was I that killed her. Oh, the more angel she and you, the blacker devil. She was false as water. Oh, I'd rash as fire to say that she was false. Thy husband knew it all. My husband? That she was false to wedlock? Aye, with Cassio. My husband? My friend, thy husband, honest, honest Iago. If he say so, may his pernicious soul rot half a grain a day. He lies to the heart. She was too fond of her most filthy bargain. 
Oh, are you coming, Argo? Peace, you were best. Thou hast not half the power to do me harm as I have to be hurt. Help, help, oh, help! The more I have killed my mistress, murder, murder! Oh, you have done well, Iago, that men must lay their murders on your neck. Disprove this villain of our beast, a man. He says thou told him that his wife was false. I did. You told a lie, an odious, damned lie, upon my soul, a lie, a wicked lie. She false with Cassio. With Cassio, mistress, go to charm your tongue. I will not charm my tongue. I'm bound to speak. My mistress here lies murdered in her bed, and your reports have set the murder on. Oh, she was foul, for Cassio confessed it. And she did gratify his amorous works with that recognizance and pledge of love which I first gave her. I saw it in his hand. It was a handkerchief. Oh, heaven. Oh, heavenly powers. Zooms, hold your peace. Twill out, twill out. I, peace. No, I will speak as liberal as the North. That handkerchief thou speakst of, I found by fortune and did give my husband. Filth, thou liest. By heaven, I do not. I do not, gentlemen. Oh, murderous coxcomb. What should such a fool do with so good a wife? Oh, villainous whore. Oh! Yeah, oh, 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 he have killed his wife. Oh, oh, I, oh, Amy, by my mistress' side. What did thy song bode, lady? Hark, canst thou hear me? I will play the swan and die to music. Willow, Willow, Willow. Moor, she was chaste. She loved thee, cruel Moor. So come my soul to bliss as I speak true. So speaking as I think, alas, I lie. Where should a fellow go? Ah, Desdemona, how dost thou look now? O oh, ill-starred wench, pale as thy smock, when we shall meet at Compt, this look of thine will hurl my soul from heaven, and fiends will snatch at it. Cold, cold, my girl, even like thy chastity. O oh, cursed, cursed slave, Whip me, ye devils, from the possession of this heavenly sight. Blow me about in winds. Roast me in sulphur. Wash me in steep-down gulfs of liquid fire. Oh, Desdemona. Desdemona. Bitch. Oh. oh. Where is this rash and most unfortunate man? That's he that was Othello. Here I am. This Iago hath part confessed his villainy. Did you and he consent to Cassio's death? Aye, noble Lodovico. Dear General, I never gave you cause. I do believe it, and I ask your pardon. Will you, I pray, demand that demi-devil? Why he hath thus ensnared my soul and body? Demand me nothing. What you know, you know. From this time forth, I never will speak word. Othello, you must forsake this room and go with us. Your power and your command is taken off, and Cassio rules in Cyprus. For this slave, Iago, if there be any cunning cruelty that can torment him much and hold him long, it shall be his. You shall close prisoner rest, till that the nature of your fault be known to the Venetian state. Come, bring him away. Soft you, a word or two before you go. I have done the state some service, and they know it. No more of that. I pray you, in your letters, when you shall these unlucky deeds relate, speak of me as I am. Nothing extenuate, nor set down aught in malice. Then you must speak of one that loved not wisely, but too well. Of one not easily jealous, but being wrought, perplexed in the extreme. Of one whose hand, like the base Indian, threw a pearl away richer than all his tribe. Of one whose subdued eyes, albeit unused to the melting mood, 
drops tears as fast as the Arabian trees their medicinable gum. Set you down this, and say besides, that in Aleppo once, where a malignant and a turbaned Turk beat a Venetian and traduced the state, I took by the throat the circumcised dog and smote him thus. I kissed thee ere I killed thee. No way but this, killing myself to die upon a kiss. This did I fear, but thought he had no weapon. For he was great of heart. To you, Lord Governor, remains the censure of this villain Iago. The time, the place, the torture, oh, enforce it. Myself will straight aboard and to the state this heavy act with heavy heart relate.